My earliest memory of photography is um, in terms of my own experience of taking pictures, was taking pictures of my friends uh, throwing buckets of water each, at each other on the beach. That's the first time with the Kodak Instamatic. But the more conscious uh, attempt at photography was ski photography, because I've skied my entire life and I still ski occasionally. And uh, it was uh, a way of recording how high we jumped, how far we jumped, the places we jumped. That was my very first attempt. And then that developed into something um, different again when I started to go to concerts, go, went to gigs as a way of trying to remember what we did and who we saw and taking pictures of the people we loved to go to, uh, listen to. We did pictures at gigs. Well, I did pictures of gigs with a couple of friends who did it. So it was really about a, a way of capturing some, a, a memory in some ways? Yeah, I mean, at first it was just bragging, I think. Just like, you know, look what we've done. It's how crazy is this? Uh, obviously, it's not very crazy by today's standards. And then it was more of trying to... Because um, we'd go to a lot of concerts. And it was a way of... I think trying to get the concert to be your own in a way, so you take it with you, not because you couldn't take your music with you, but you took your icons, your heroes with you. How, how did that sort of interest in capturing the moment develop into you really thinking about photography is where my interest lies? Well, well there was quite a long gap between that and doing it again. Uh, I, this was more teenage years, early teenage years, and then it kind of disappeared away. I went in to do other things. Um, I guess it came back after a year at university where I realised that <coughs> spending a year at university, uh, I realised that that wasn't really what I wanted to do. I mean, I think to be a student would be fine, but realising the options I would have later, I didn't really want to spend the rest of my life in that world. And as an option, I felt kind of quite pressurised to um, come up with something that I really loved at that point. And the one thing that was natural for me and I thought was quite unresolved, I don't think I even thought about it like that at the time, but thinking back at it, I think the one thing that I thought that I wanted to try that I hadn't really tried was taking pictures. And how did you learn all the sort of technical side and the processes? Was that self-taught? Uh, the base, uh, you have, you know, it's kind of like a mystery around photography, and the, and it's pretty much rubbish. You know, it's so basic. Anyone can do it. It's not about the technique. It's not about those. You know, if you look at people who work with really, really basic techniques, they can take the most amazing pictures. It's not about technique. I mean, technique, a lot of it. The basic I learned there. I learned later on assisting in Norway for a photographer there called Nils Beek. And then, obviously, it was a quantum leap when I worked for Nick later on, where you kind of you come in with the basic knowledge, and then you see that this can be developed to such a high level and such a high quality. Because I think one thing is the technique, and one thing is to learn what you know what is required in terms of quality. Uh, and working for Nick as an assistant, that obviously exploded. And then you know I still learn things all the time, I'm still develop. It's not like you come to a certain point and then that development stopped. How important or how integral has that been? Or was that process? In oh, it's hugely important. Yeah, I've, I've said that many, many times as well. And I think, you know, when you come quite, I mean, I think I was 24 at that point, And I've n I'd never been in touch with the world of fashion at all. The world, world of photography, yeah, but the world of, you know, my world, of, you know, my history of fashion started there. My year one is there, or year zero rather, is there. And, um, and it was great because, you know, Nick's way of looking at it is so wide mm -hmm. and so open that I feel that that's the kind of greatest gift Nick has ever given me. Because I, I remember talking to Nick about it and he was saying, so, you know, what kind of music do you like and, you know, what kind of, you know, really trying to kind of, because he, he's interested, right? Mm. Not, not because he's trying to play metal games with you or anything, but he would be, you know, he'd be interested in who was this guy he was going to hire and pretty much spend every waking hour with for the next three years. And I would say things like, oh, well, you know, I love Miles Davis because Miles Davis' music is so unique. You know, you can, he would work in different kind of genres, but his style, you can always hear it through all the time. 
no, I think it's quite important to find your style, and Nick would just arrest me straight away and say, no, 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 it's just not that, just forget that <laughs> straight away, you know, just don't try to find the style at all. Just go out, treat everything individually, put your mind to every project as it was a new thing. You know, those kind of thoughts are fantastic. I don't think that there's many people who will kind of teach you that mm. as a photographer's assistant. Is, is, was it quite hard to make that transition from being, you know, in such a um, high profile position as Nick's assistant to moving on to becoming your own photographer? Oh, uh, uh, yeah, well, I mean, scary as yes. yeah. whatever, but at the same time, I, you know, I have to admit, even if I thought the, the job was joyful, it was bloody hard, and Nick's the first to admit that. Uh, so it was kind of like the definition of mixed emotion, it was like such a joy of finally kind of be able to do my own thing, and obviously terrifying to be able to do my own thing. But at the same time, I just started doing a couple of small things. So I knew 